Well, today's the day that this goes away. Stick around. All right, so quick update, right? Still alive, still working, I'm still kicking here, but, well, Uncle Sam is requiring me to go elsewhere for a while, and in turn, the charger is, well, typically wouldn't go anywhere. It hasn't really moved in the last year. I'm really tired of looking at it, and despite, well, me really wanting to just sell it and punt it and start on a different project, I'm gonna stick this one out. Don't worry, I'm not quitting on it yet. So. What's gonna happen is I have uh, Andy over in a different bay who's just getting back from school. He came over today, took some measurements for a roll cage. So I'm gonna cage this thing. Uh, he's gonna shoot me a couple designs over and we're gonna figure that out. Second thing is then I'm gonna have someone at a body shop go through and actually re-strip this thing back down, do good body work on it, Right, better than what this guy was doing. Work the fiberglass as needed, better than what it is. And close up some of the gaps, right? So some of them aren't exactly up to par. And then from there, we're going to have it switched over and go to the interior. So I'm planning on having someone help me manage the build while I'm gone, kind of help the process through. And I get to spend some good old deployment money. Same probably deployment money that I used when I bought it when I was coming back from Iraq. Going back into it again. So this is going to be a two deployment car, I guess. My wife is thrilled. And on top of that, I can't imagine anything else that's going to go wrong with this thing. You know, I'm not even going to knock on wood because it's going to happen. Right? So I'm praying that everything else goes good on it. But I'm going to show you a couple things specifically I'm going to have to tackle and move forward in how we're going to accomplish it all. So, let's take a look. First thing is the rear. So the back half of the car, that's my primary concern. It's not correct. So I'm having an issue already with how it was mated. And it's cracked. So with that happening, I know we're going to have a bunch of issues. The same thing happened on the other side. So I have two quarter panel fitment issues. So I'm going to have them essentially pull the quarters and go through, rehang everything how it needs to be to make sure I'm not having any issues. That also is probably fitting into why I'm having an issue with the trunk lid. So the trunk lid shows this way over and then this barely hitting here, right? That does deal with the fact that if you notice, it is twisted and that's also because, well, there's no spring tension back here to keep this straight. So, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Now this thing obviously is running richer than Donald Trump because I haven't been able to tune the thing because I can't drive it. So it's gonna get pretty smoky in here. You've been warned. We turn on all the fans, get circulation, circulation going on in here. It's gonna be a second. I realized that oh, my valve covers is leaking pretty bad, so I'm gonna see if I can just give it a little tight. That might be why it's smoking so much up front, but we'll see here. Give me a minute. So, pulling the alternator now. No idea what alternator it is. Came on the motor. All right. Well, let's go get another part, another part here. Once I figure out whatever this came off of. All right. So uh, after we took it off, got a part number. Found out it was a uh, Jegs. Sold, I don't know, some house brand. It's actually a Delco Remy, but what it has, the same setup is, I have to rev it up to, I think it's like 880 RPMs, and then 
go to charge. So I'm going to put this alternator back on and see if it charges after I rev it up. I don't, I don't know. It's a new day, it's a new shirt. I got a couple things I gotta knock out. So tomorrow, I'm loading the charger up onto a trailer and taking it to a, uh, like a old school collision place. I'm gonna have them go through, number one, fix a bunch of the body work on here that I'm not happy with, like the gaps and such. I've, I think I mentioned this before, at some point I'll run that footage before. So you guys already know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna load it onto uh, a trailer. It's on the other side of the Teal GMC 54 truck over there. Load it up on the truck and I'm gonna trailer it down to the guy. So when I'm gone on mobilization, this car can keep working. So I gotta kinda go through and pull anything that's loose out of here so that way it doesn't uh, fly away. Then I gotta button up everything else that I can think of. So, uh, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. All right, let's get to it. Do some sketchy shit. Do da, do da. Hope oh, we get away with it. Ah, do do ba day. put when I'm leaving I want someone to keep working on the car and from about there back that little section here there's a couple problems with it the trunk pan sits too high and in turn that means either my trunk pan is too high or my quarters are too low some of the body work that we did man we were learning and it's okay but if I'm spending all this money on this car I'd rather have it be right so I want to try to take it to somebody who can make it right because I don't want to end up having money to paint a car and do all these things and finalize the fiberglass all for it to have to be redone in a few years when I want to make it right. Might as well try to do it now and we'll go from there. Now, one big issue. In order for them to want to touch the back of the car, install the windows, install the grill, finish the hood, and deal with any body gap issues. Uh, that's pretty much what I told them is, you're gonna finish the exterior of the car, you're not gonna touch suspension, you're not gonna touch wiring, nothing on the interior, just the exterior of the car. I've gotten two quotes. The first one was actually across the border in Mexico, which already gives a lot of people who are car guys, or especially in this area, a bunch of red flags because once it goes over there, if it disappears, you're never gonna get anything back for it. And the other one, uh, so they quoted me $45,000 to do that. 
And then the other shop locally here, uh, they quoted me 30,000, which was the one I took it to that you guys saw. $30,000, no parts uh, included in that. And for any unforeseen things they find, they're gonna charge more. So I'm pretty sure what happens is they see this section right here and they go overcharge. And that's where we're at. So well, let's get the steering box on this thing. At least I can move it around and we're gonna go from there. All right, so after evaluating and after I shaved this down and got all this to get stuck, we realized that the steering column, when I put it together, I was missing a couple pieces. Number one, this bearing I had installed incorrectly and put on top of the flasher relay, which means that this retaining plate, switch, and bearing didn't fit. So I don't know where I put it, but I can't find it. So I need to find that. And then the second part is I'm missing a retaining ring that goes here and then a seal that goes just, I guess, upwards on, I'm saying this is down, upwards on the shaft itself. So, I've ordered a rebuild kit for those two parts. I'm trying to find or source my retaining clip, or I'm sorry, my, my plate on top. So until I can get an answer on that, yeah, I don't know. So just fix my door quick while I'm clearing my mind before I wanna sell this car. Chris is here, so let's go see what he's doing. So if you look down here, this motor mount bolt is like, it's not one that, I mean, I got pushed past like a couple, like a half inch of it, but I don't know if it's gonna break loose and let it go down. If I lift it up, can you see if this will give you enough clearance right here? Can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. So it pulls out and it hits the bottom here. Uh, of course. <laughs> so I was gonna try to save that gas. Out it comes. Yeah. That rod is an ever loving to put in when it's in the bay. We don't know. The genius who put any kind of seal into the machine for this lady. No? I think you're supposed to be, right? <laughs> Why are you in the clock? <laughs> what the f*** kind of forgot to record my interaction with the guy but he's gonna take the project on for me so uh, yeah uh, that's gonna be gone probably in a week or so I should be able to get a video of it getting sent off and then until then we're gonna keep working on a couple minor things that I need to get done number one uh, I got to get the steering column plugged the problem that I'm gonna have with that is uh, I'm missing a bushing. It was supposed to come in. It did not yet. And uh, I also have to wait on a wrecking yard for a, one other part that I'm 90% sure I had and I'm pretty sure I threw out. Because I thought I didn't need it and I obviously do. So, other than that, uh, my voltage regulator went on my truck. So, um, we're gonna work on that guy for just a little bit. I also think I figured out what the problem was with uh, why I was only running 15s and probably not faster because I should have ran faster at the drag strip and I think it's because I'm running out of fuel so to make sure that that's not going to happen we uh, kind of threw a little bit more fuel in the bowls and I also have a mechanical fuel pump that's pumping more than 30 liters per hour. Uh, I got a Holly 
one that does not require a return line and it has a built-in fuel pressure regulator all within the mechanical pump. It's pretty cool. And uh, you know, a couple of dollars, but I'm hoping that will fix it. So let's take a look, huh? Got the, I guess, fuel pump rod. Know, I'm sure there's a technical term for it out, but what you're gonna notice is that there's a little bit of wear on it. Not too bad. Just a little bit, which is normal. With these ends, you can get them in brass or different metal types to try to base upon your cam. This one would be fine. Probably to reuse if I needed to, but I think the new one came with one. I'm not 100%, so I'll have to check. See. Seems kind of empty. Down there. Alright, guess I get to reuse my rod. Alright. Well, what I'm gonna do is put some grease on this thing, shove it back up so it holds in place, and I can just put the new pump on. I have heard that there's a problem with these pumps though, and that is that you may have to do a little bit of clearance somewhere around the block because it doesn't perfectly fit so you gotta kind of shave the block a little bit which is a stupid stupid concept here's an idea just design this to be just you know a little bit further away I don't know we'll see maybe I'm lucky maybe I, maybe I just I'm throw it with an extra couple gaskets on here or something <laughs> don't do that somebody else come in here and find parts well that's gonna be easy if you know where it's at but I don't even know where stuff is at so I'm just kind of going through and separating stuff based upon here's interior here's stuff that needs to be put on exterior here's gaskets here's door trim whatever whatever I got door seals so I'm doing everything I can to try to just make this be a little bit easier for whoever's helping me out. So if I can help them out, hopefully it saves me a few bucks. They don't get so frustrated working on this thing that they want to burn it to the ground like I want to sometimes. So, yeah. All right, so the car has to go up. All right, so my 70 charger's gotta go up. So, what I'm doing is add a jack to the front and help you kind of get a little extra weight off that. And there's two bolts, one on each lower control arm. Just because mine's q one the original style, or the stock style is the same. You tighten it, front of the car goes up, lower it, front of the car goes down. Uh, Three-fourths inch, I believe. Yep, three-fourths. So, real simple. I need it to go up, so I'm going to tighten it. All you got to do. Pretty simple. So what's happening right now is this car is going over to a buddy's house on the other side of town. He's going to continue working on this thing while I'm gone, and I'm hoping, I'm sure he's going to do a great job. He's shown me a couple things he has done. He's highly recommended from all the other guys that have Mopars around here that have had their stuff redone. So all I'm doing now is I'm waiting on the tow truck to get here 
so I can actually get this thing loaded up. Well, while I was driving around, loaded everything else up that needs to go like the hood and everything else in the truck. And now I've noticed that the Holly fuel pump I put on is leaking. It's all over the place. Gotta love it. It's just a pain in the ass. I just, it's just, if it's not one thing, it's another. So maybe next week I'll figure that out. I don't know. But right now, waiting on the tow truck to say temporarily, temporarily, goodbye to the car. All right. Yeah. Here we go. I know what you guys are thinking. There's a lot of room in here, I should pick up another project. No, I don't have the time. I've thought about it, just saying. But what I will say is that I'm very optimistic that the guy I dropped it off to is gonna do awesome. There's a lot of cars you guys saw in his driveway. Those are all his, I think. And he restores Mopars, that's what he does. And I told him I don't need it to be a 10, I need it to be like an eight out of 10. Just fix any issues that are there, continue putting it together for me. I just wanna be able to drive the car. I'm done fighting with it. And uh, he, he understands. So hopefully the next time you see that car, we will be driving it. Not just me, because I'm taking you with. You best believe. But until that comes, which will be, uh, you know, could be, it's gonna be there before you know it a few months, just be patient with me. We're gonna do it together. So, uh, I guess until I see you guys again, give me a couple months, subscribe if you haven't, and that way you can see the revival process. Keep on building. Okay.